What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. If you didn't know this, I do retrofit, I do fix your current arcade. So if you do have an arcade that does need work on and you wanna bring it to a Game Case Arcades level, just let me know. That's what we're doing today. We're gonna to fix this arcade. So just give you a real quick backstory on this one. I had a customer that messaged me back in Thanksgiving. He says to me, hey Vic, I have a bar top already, but it doesn't look as good as yours or something about there was an error that keeps popping up with one of the emulators. So uh, I told him to bring it in. So he has an existing bar top. We're gonna take a look at this bar top. And again, I really wanna make this video. I don't wanna knock anybody. Please don't take this video as me making fun of somebody or being cruel, but this bar top is the exact reason like my next step is I do want to build my own meaning I do want to cut wood which it looks like this is what somebody did but this is kind of like amateur level again we're gonna look at we're gonna look closer at this bar top specifically this is it looks like maybe about an 18 inch this is definitely a little bit smaller than game room solutions deluxe cabinet but I look at this and I say to myself is it worth me trying to build my own cabinet I mean again yes I could save money but you know, I always stick with Ryan from Game Room Solutions. He makes great cabinets and this right here, I'm gonna take you closer. This is what I fear if I was to build a cabinet. So again, just real quick, going back to the story. Message me on Thanksgiving, he says, Vic, um, I'm stuck on a menu or like when he boots it, it doesn't go to a right menu. It actually goes right into the settings menu. He needs some help. So I told him, listen, bring it to me. Let's check it out. He sent me a couple of pictures and I did notice that this was a homemade cabinet he actually still contacts and is in contact with the original builder um because apparently they i tell i asked him you know what do you have is it running a pie what's inside of it do you know what's inside of it so he's actually talking to the actual creator of this why the creator didn't take it back or at least help him with it i don't know i don't really care but yes i will help you and basically we're going to bring this to a nice bigger basically a nicer setup we're going to try to at least make this beautiful but again, the customer did give me a budget. I do have to keep that in mind, so I can't really do too much with the budget that he gave me. But basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make a new uh, SD image. We're gonna change out his buttons to be the LED buttons from Game Room Solutions. And if possible, we're gonna do the LED strips just to kind of give it the underglow if possible. So now again, I'm not making fun of anybody. This is something that I consider like, you know, some people, I mean, I don't wanna say it's common sense because I'm making fun of the guy, but some stuff is like common sense. Me, I would watch videos and learn how to do the woodworking part of it. But this one, again, I don't know who made this, but it's a shoddy job. I'm gonna be brutally honest. This is like, if I were to put this kind of product out, I'd be embarrassed. Um, again, I don't wanna talk bad, but this is like reality. I'm, I'm trying to hit you guys with reality. This is somebody that actually bought an arcade from, a, from someone. You bought this from a company or somebody that makes arcades and you know you didn't pay the premium price this is what you got so again we're going to take a close look at this specific cabinet this is kind of like the pre-work on it uh, it'll probably take me about a day to complete it again we're just changing out the buttons we're going to update the sd card and we're going to open it up and see it but i'm going to turn i'm going to go behind the camera now i'm going to show you some details that i did notice that again it's it's kind of basic common sense but you know, again, I don't know the name of the builder. I don't know who built this thing. I'm not gonna make fun of anybody. I'm not gonna do it, but I mean, come on. There is some common sense that you didn't even try to do. Um, I'm gonna go behind the camera. Let's take a closer look at this arcade. So off the bat again, I did not, I don't even know how much the customer paid for this arcade. The first thing I definitely noticed is the size of this thing. This is, um, I could probably measure it out, but it is using a four by three type of screen, um, possibly a Dell. Definitely this is like maybe, I don't know, edge to edge, at least maybe 18 inches. Let's get a ruler. So again, I grab the ruler real quick from edge to edge, outside edge to outside edge. It's about 19 and a half inches. Uh, screen, I mean, we could estimate it's a 15 inch screen, just kind of eyeballing it. Um, again, some things to real quick point out on this one. I mean, again, not trying to make fun of anybody, but first off, your control panel cut is too short you're using black screws to hold this in place you got one here we have another one right in the corner holding this in place number three and number four looks like very tiny wood screws um again i'm not trying to knock anybody but you know nice setup i do like the the kind of slanted button scheme he's got going on not sure what any of this is just random button don't know what this is this obviously is your player one and two i don't know why 
he put the nut this really goes behind the wood i don't know why this is out here it's kind of sitting outside maybe to give it some appeal the biggest thing that i noticed is the artwork on this it's nice artwork but the big thing that whoever designed this is that you are supposed to put the artwork first and then the t-molding this was opposite he put the t-molding first and then the artwork that is not the correct way to do it as you can see the artwork is over the t-molding um i mean again you can kind of see it here the customer did ask me if i could do anything about the artwork i can't uh you know he's not a fan of this kind of this is i don't i mean again i don't know who did this very random commodore 64 logo again it's printed over this kind of fake diamond plate i mean he tried to dress it up again nice artwork i mean i do give it it is pretty nice but again as you can see peeling off this is not the right way to do it i shouldn't be able to peel this off t molding wasn't done right take a look at the marquee real quick very skinny very very tiny so as you can see your your you the a it's you don't even see the a it's like the top of the a you don't see the bottom of the c he's using a nice um I forgot what this is called, but it's basically, I call it the marquee holder. Nice marquee holder. looks like it's spray painted. You do kind of see the air bubbles on this. I mean, again, it's a homemade cabinet. I'm not trying to knock it. Look at the back though. The back is what really gave it away. Paint the top. And you can kind of see he probably took a router to this. This right here is actually a volume controller. There's actual speaker bar right here to easily move the knob. We have a extension wire holding out of it. it. Has this nice little clip to transport it. And that is exactly how I got it. I mean, again, just to give you an idea, I'm gonna put on my light, but you could just see, you, I get it, it's homemade. You, you should at least take a, a sander to this. Very nice idea, I'll be honest. This right here, again, I'm gonna turn on the arcade. You're gonna see the light turn on. There is a speaker thing here, but I mean, you really should at least sand it. You got the T-molding cut right on the back it's not a good way to hide it i normally put it on the bottom so you don't see it again not trying to knock anybody you got a black screw holding this piece in we're going to take this thing apart and basically we're just going to bring it to another level i mean really the hardest thing is normally there's a lip here enough of a lip to put an led strip but the way i see it right now there is no room for an led strip so an underglow might not be doable again you do have this big gap right here i mean i could put my fingers here Glass not being held. I don't even know. Oh, it's being held by a screw. That is how my plexiglass right now is being held in with a lot of pressure from the screen. I mean, again, I'm going to boot it up real quick and I'll show you guys what the complaint was, at least for the SD card. So again, definitely a homemade cabinet. I mean, I respect it. it. It's got the nice cuts to it. This definitely is painted white. You could feel the roughness on the wood but again nobody's gonna really touch this very interesting marquee it's kind of like a i don't know how to explain it it's like a paper but it's like a plexi paper very interesting again i'm not an expert i'm not the king of arcades i don't know every single thing but again my envision is to build my own but i take lessons like this i mean come on you can't just do black screws to hold the control panel and I'm hoping that there is a bracket here, which is the right way to do it. Right now we're gonna boot it up. And again, I'm making this video to show you guys, like you have to be careful. As it's booting up real quick, let's look over the control panel. You could see the USB encoder LEDs, some random glob of glue going on over here. I'm gonna actually boot this. I loaded this up earlier. I'm gonna actually boot this to a track mode, which is what the customer was complaining about. Well, the track mode reboots. Let's take a look at the back real quick. Again, there you have it. There is an audio kind of bar that's on the back of it. That's basically how I could raise and lower the volume. Again, I'm going to show you. This is going to boot up into a track mode um, before while I was playing with it. And again, I'm, this, the reason I'm making this is because you have to just be careful. Um, again, a lot of videos coming to you guys, especially about the hyper spins. We're going to fix this one. But real quick, a lot of you guys notice, like in my videos, my hyper, uh, you notice the attract mode. A track mode is a very nice thing about these things. So this right here is how his system boots up. Ugly. Ugly as hell. We are in the Sega Master System. Um, 240 games on this. But this is how it booted up. 
the biggest thing that I have about this is that there is no wheel for the system. That's annoying. So if I have to change the system, I got to go right and it'll change. So he definitely wanted the whole system wheel like you see in my videos. It actually has the sound effect to hyperspin. So again, that was the one thing. I mean, once this boots up, I didn't even try this real quick. So let's just see real quick. How do we exit? Um, maybe he's got to configure to a one button press. So again, did I got player one, I guess this is coin. This button's actually stuck. Very interesting buttons, concave buttons, pretty nice. This is another coin. Now, if I were to exit, he probably has coin start. Yes. This guy has it set up to coin start. Such an odd way to do it. I mean, again, this is going to be a little bit tough. We're going to have to drill at least a couple more holes to make it the coins and the four player admin buttons, the four button admin buttons. But again, the wheel on this is just horrendous. There's no system wheel. Um, I can't even, yeah, look at this. So this again, oh, there we go. Okay. There is a configure option. So I'm able to get into this again. This is a track mode. Let's real quick. He's got the blackout. That's just right. He's got this. He doesn't even have the screensaver set up, right? I'm going to set this up to 10 seconds. Let's see. Let's see how a track mode looks like on this. So if a track mode is set correctly, this is going to basically, once it goes to track mode, it's going to go all of the Konami games. I mean, again, uh, I asked him for a, comp there you go. Let's see. Yes. This is showing all the Konami games. So it is good. As far as a track mode, it is pretty nice. It does go into a track mode, but the seller didn't set the whole settings up, right? That's the wrong thing to do. Um, at least he gave you the configuration thing. I mean, again, the big gripe about this is that that's how I'm changing the system. There is no system wheel. So if I wanted to do NES, I, I, I have to sit here. I want to find Super Nintendo. Give me Super Nintendo. I'm literally going to have to sit here. Now, for example, right now, right, for this camera, I do want to go back into the settings and go back to original mode. And now I have to sit here and do each one. This is Super Nintendo. Again, guys, this is something you have to think about. This is just something that people will sell you these systems. This apparently has no Game Boys in it. So I think he's using a 32 gigabyte SD card. I'm going to go back here and we're actually going to launch into Emulation Station just to show you like what this person sold this guy. I don't know how many games he sold him, but from the looks of just the systems alone is I would say a probably a 32 gigabyte SD card at the most. I mean, again, it literally says Mad Little Pixels logo on it. Reselling somebody else's work. I mean, it's not really the right thing to do, but it happens. People, it happens. Again, arcade punks, you could find these things on arcade punks. Um, bat style joysticks, they feel pretty good. I really can't wait to open this thing up just to see what's in it. But I'm real quick going to show you this. We're going to look at the systems. We're going to look at how many systems there are and also all the games to it. I'm not going to add it up, but again, this is a customer that asked for an arcade from someone and they sold him this he didn't tell me how much he paid for it um but again just kind of sharing you guys and giving you some experience and some thought when you are looking to get bar top arcades or any arcade for that matter uh so again real quick just flip the camera so we could put it down but let's say real quick we got arcade we got dreamcast which is on this but there's no games to it there's no dreamcast games sega master system you got 281, you got the Mega Drive, the any, any, any DOS. We got two games on MS Dots, ports, two games, Scum VM, there's probably nothing on it. Yep, there's nothing. Sega 32X, 33 games. This is definitely a 32 gigabyte SD card to it. 68 games, Super Nintendo, 786, Turbo Graphics, 94, the Sinclair. This is, this, well, there's nothing on it, so it's just there. Cody. Pixel, I don't even know what Pixel is. And then you got Arcade. So, I mean, one, three, four. There's about 13 systems on this thing. Definitely is not 128 gigabytes at least 
Um, so again, we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna open it with you guys. You guys just gotta be careful what you're buying. Um, the buns are pretty nice. I'll be honest, buns, this, just this right here, this whole player one thing. Yeah, this whole player one thing, I mean, maybe he did it to look cool or look different, but this is literally the nut that goes behind it. Um, let's start from the back. Let's open this thing up. 